Let's take a look at circular motion, meaning some some object is moving in a circular path. And this uh, this video tutorial is going to focus on what we call angular speed. And basically, angular speed is if an object moves in circular motion, such as here's a red object uh, on this circle of radius 1. Let's say that it travels along this path on the circle, the circular path. And it makes one revolution, makes one revolution per second. Okay? And let's come over here to this uh, circle that's twice as big. The distance around is twice as much. The circumference is twice as much, and the radius is twice as much. Uh, and some different object travels in this circular path on this larger circle. Well, in this case, let's say that the uh, the pink or purple, magenta, whatever you want to call it, this guy also travels one revolution per second. Uh, this is almost like an angular speed. An angular speed tells you what angle the object travels through, rotates through, per unit of time. So let me write that here. Angular speed equals uh, angle, let's say, rotated through per unit of time, so divided by time. So in this case, we have revolution per time, revolution per time. That is not an angle. So a typical unit for angular speed might be radians per second. How many radians does an object rotate through every second? Or uh, degrees per second? Or, you know, radians per minute, etc. So any unit of angle measure divided by any unit of time could be an angular speed. So let's go back to the two examples up here. We can see, though, that even though the purple guy here traveled a greater distance in one second, right? One revolution in one second, so greater distance covered, his angle is still the same. One complete revolution over here, one complete revolution every second. So let's talk about how to convert these to radians per second. So let's take one revolution per second and write it like this. One revolution per second. Same thing. And our goal is to replace revolutions with radians, okay? It's a bit more standard because, again, radians are unitless. We can do more calculations with them. So if I want revolutions to cancel, I need revolutions on the bottom. If I want to replace it with radians, I have to put radians on top. So now we need some sort of conversion here. We need um, how many radians there are in a revolution, or how many revolutions there are in a radian. Well, luckily for us, one revolution is equivalent to 2 pi radians. So there's our conversion factor, right? If you make one complete revolution, what angle is that? That's 2 pi radians. And so what happens is revolutions cancels, and you get 2 pi radians per second. So 2 pi, we'll write it back in this form, radians per second. And that is the angular speed of this object. All right, so revolutions uh, can easily be converted to radians by using this sort of conversion factor. Just recall that for every one revolution, there are two pi radians.